I was actually uh, uh, doing some some reading in the morning when one of my friends um, phoned me in the morning and he gave me the news. I could not continue uh, the page that I was reading. I didn't even understand it. I closed the email. It just, I didn't. It just was unbelievable. I couldn't actually say a word. I think it just represented this moment of feeling a tremendous loss. I was devastated. I had lost a friend. I went to numerous places on that day uh, in the Muslim community and people were just devastated in ways that I haven't seen people devastated for in a long time. His pure heart, clean heart. Yes, I am very, very sad. If I remember Dr. Ibrahim, because he's my brother. I'm sure other students may have thought, oh, my professor passed away. I thought, like, my friend passed away. I felt like I lost my second father. He was a universal man. That's how I would describe him. Because Ibrahim considered everybody from every sphere of life uh, as important. He would ask you tremendous questions about your place of birth, you know, your experiences, your, your part of the world. He called me his sister, and I found that was precious. The, the Prophet Muhammad states that love for others is what you love for yourself, and Ibrahim indeed was a model of this. Ibrahim, I think, is an individual who makes us think that it is not only the personal accomplishments that we need to look after, but what have we done to others? And what have we done for our global humanity? He was always willing to let other people take the limelight if that was something that would let the vision move. It wasn't that he had to be at the center. He just wanted things to happen. He wanted to push things forward. Like he could be talking to you for the first time, and after you're done with the conversation, you'd feel good about yourself. He saw the gift in everybody, and he was able to tell you what's good about you and what's brilliant about you. He truly took interest um, you know, in, in what I needed in order the direction I needed to go to school. Unbelievably gentle and uh, uh, warm and welcoming and just reaching out to people in a way that I hardly have ever seen anybody in my life. He actually reminds me in that respect of the, sa the saying by Goethe, which is, if you want to reach the infinite, just reach out in the finite world to everyone all around. Whatever he had, he gave. And I believe that this is why perhaps, you know, he gave so much, he couldn't sustain it. His, his body perhaps could not sustain that. I, for one, will be forever changed by having met him. He lived what he taught, he lived what he wrote, he lived what he said, he walked the walk. Ibrahim and Fatima and their two children. Uh, their home was a place of gathering. It was kind of like a caravan sarai, you know, where people gathered, where he would gather people. And he gathered people in a very deliberate way, I think. Uh, deliberate in the sense that he was always attentive to difference. It was meaningful. It was not just hanging out together. It was meaningful to be together and to be together in that particular group of people. And this is like the most amazing diversity of, of people, people from the various religious communities, people from throughout the community in Edmonton, people from the university, uh, pe professors in women's studies, uh, uh, digni religious dignitaries from whatever religion you can think of. traveled with them to four different countries. In Syria, there's, uh, you go to the suit, the old market, you'll find a gentleman who will be carrying kind of like a, a teapot and, a old, and, a, and a bucket with water in it, and he'll pour you tea in a cup, and you pay him whatever it works out to be, 50 cents or whatever it, the cost is. And that same cup, you know, he might have two cups hanging off his belt, and he rinses them out in the same bucket of water that's hanging off the side of his belt as well, too. And, you know, we, we came and Dr. Ibrahim wanted to, he loved his tea. So he said, well, let's have some tea. I said, well, you know, Ibrahim, that's not sanitary. You know, maybe we should, you know, we should be careful, right? And he just looked over at me. He said, you know, I'm going to have one. Actually, I'm going to have two. 
He goes, you worry too much. He spends about 15 minutes, has a, has a, sits down on the man's stool and has a conversation, laughs and jokes and, and uh, finds out which family he's from and, you know, he starts talking and about the history and it's amazing. And I just stood there and I, you know, I said to myself afterwards, I said, you know what, wow. I mean, things, those types of moments just really move you because you, 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 you feel a, I don't know, a, a closeness, you know, um, to being more human. It actually goes back for me to the Hebrew Bible. In my tradition, I'm an Orthodox Christian, we call it the hospitality of Abraham, Abraham and Sarah. And it's this, this narrative about when they are camped in their tent by the oaks by Marmara. And, and uh, the prophet Abraham, uh, peace be upon him, sees, sees the strangers by the oak trees and runs out to them and says to them, please, please, don't pass by. Please don't pass by. Wait, come, let me get you something to eat. Let's talk. My friend shared that spirit. If you look at some of the books that he had written, some of the journal articles that he had written, it was all about dignity of difference, I like to call it. Um, it was all about you know, using the scholarship, the, 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 uh, the depth of scholarship, uh, to understand how individuals who are completely separate were actually very much united in terms of their, their end goal. He always looked at, uh, at his role in the universe as uh, members of the human family, of the global uh, uh, vision of Islam. His achievements were, uh, were associated with his great scope uh, and understanding of Islamic history, Islamic civilization, especially uh, the contributions of, of Islamic civilization to the Western world that are so sorrowfully neglected in uh, our Western educational system. We are only now beginning to realize from testimonies of people outside the extent to which he put the University of Alberta and the political science department on the map in places like Turkey and Syria and Jordan and in Israel and other parts around the world whenever he visited. You know, he always felt proud of being uh, from the U of A. The U of A gave him the opportunity to, to play the role that he played. Read our house for us, O oh stranger. Kiss the stones of our backyard. Embrace the leaves of our trees. They have shed so many tears since our departure. And take care of I recall our one evening sitting with Ibrahim late at night. We'd been walking in Istanbul under that glorious moon that shines over the marble sea. And he mentioned that, that when he was a young, a young man uh, and a young scholar, that uh, the struggle and tragedy uh, of Palestine uh, was so uh, difficult for him, as it is for so many, that he had decided at one point that he, he had to to not devote himself directly to that. But what I saw in that moment was, was both Ibrahim's intellectual life and the movements of his heart being the way in which he was seeking to hold them together and to remain a person who was able to pull life from death instead of a person who was captured by, by the horrors of the organized inadequacies of human history and the horrors of the terror of history. But he was internationally renowned as a scholar and kept up that scholarship when he was here. At the same time, he really took seriously the fact that this was a community endowed chair and tried to be in the community and working with them. Ibrahim was truly a critical public intellectual, uh, very much in need in 21st century for Muslims to be challenged on two grounds, tradition and modernity. He was committed to dialogue when it came to religion, when it came to Israel-Palestine, he was committed to dialogue and bringing different perspectives together and exchanging information, exchanging ideas. And he didn't like this Canadian perspective on tolerance. He yeah. thought it was hilariously yeah. misplaced. 
because he said that no multicultural society can exist on tolerance. It's not good enough. It's not good enough because how can you celebrate diversity when you're holding your nose? I mean, that's what we do when we tolerate something. He was just a bottomless well of social intelligence. In a three-year period in Edmonton, Ibrahim has done to the community what a lot of people who are born here, still living, can never achieve in their lifetime. But what Ibrahim left for sure is a wealth of scholarly work and social work and just legwork. It's just, it's enormous. I think he's left it to us to continue the work he started. And to approach people with curiosity to learn from them and to see the value in everybody. Ibrahim's life and legacy will be celebrated, will be remembered, and he's very much alive. Ibrahim, wherever you are, I want you to know that you made a great difference to all of us here and we'll miss you very much. Your legacy will continue and will never stop and it will happen. I will always look up to you and wish you peace and uh, wish you mercy from God and hopefully we will meet in a better world and in a better place. I'm very privileged to have been taught by you and uh, to have been exposed to the kind of knowledge that you've passed on to me. All the very best wishes and our prayers for your family and also prayers for your soul. This is not a goodbye. This is keep in touch. Ibrahim, my brother, I miss you terribly. I, your spirit will always be with me. May your memory be eternal.